Subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest updates. While Cyclone Faraji has been weakening as of late, that eye really collapsing as you can see on the latest satellite imagery. It's a Category 3 cyclone on the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale at 14.7 degrees south, 84.6 degrees east. Here are the current stats for the storm. Winds of 125 miles per hour and a pressure of 950 millibars, and it's moving southeast at 7 miles per hour. No CDPS rating has been given at this time because the storm is not expected to hit land. Well, here we are. Here is the storm. It's out in the middle of nowhere, and you can see those wind quadrants there. 65 nautical miles out on the northern hemisphere of the whole thing. And then on the southern side, 90 nautical miles out. That's where the wind field expands on the southeastern side and on the southwestern side, 95 nautical miles out. It's nowhere near land. The closest location, Seabreeze Village, 1,005 miles away. And by the time we get to Karatha, Australia, you're 2,121 miles away. So really, this thing's not going to be impacting any land anytime soon nowhere near any of the land it masses there. Technically, there is a possibility that once it's no longer tropical, well beyond its tropical lifespan, it could strike Australia and bring some less than convenient weather over there, but it's not gonna bring anything uh, to anywhere near the intensity it currently is. Well, here it is, 125 miles per hour, and you can see NOAA ADT at 115 miles per hour. Force 13 running with CIMSS ADT in RAM multi-platform at 125 miles per hour. And the RSMC Mateo France at 130 miles per hour, one minute sustained. Well, here's our cone for Fragi, and you can see there, 125 miles per hour, 950 millibars. We're expecting this to weaken pretty quickly and be a tropical storm by two days out. So, this is really going to begin weakening pretty quickly here. Uh, and then we're expecting it to be a tropical depression by five days out. So this is It's really gonna be weakening pretty quickly. Shear is going to be increasing quite a bit with time and as a result of that The expectation is at least as of now that it's gonna be weakening pretty quickly Here, sea surface temperatures. Those are looking excellent for the storm right now. It's not gonna be the issue They are gonna fall off a little bit, but it's gonna be wind shear That's really gonna take this thing and weaken it quite quickly but those sea surface temperatures, again, you're in the 29-ish area right there. So you're in a pretty good region when it comes to the warmth of those sea surface temperatures. Here's the h -warf. The h -warf holds on to this for quite a while, keeping it as a Category 3 for all the way until around the end of its uh, forecast period there. And you can see lots of rainfall expected to fall, but no land area is expected to be impacted from this. Well, here's the model comparison. A downhill slide from here, with, again, the h -warf being the outlier, keeping it as a strong cyclone for the next few days. I believe that's unlikely, so is our forecasting team. Wind shear is expected to go up a fair bit, although not too much, and it's sea surface temperatures. Those are going to remain quite high in the mid-level relative humidity. That's going to be the big problem. You can see that uh, that curve around that the storm's expected to make, and during that time, we're expecting that convection to really begin to collapse in on itself a little bit. Here's the storm, and again, you can just see the collapse in appearance has really occurred over the past day or so. That eye is just gone and it's really clear that the storm is not what it used to be. It's exceptionally clear that the storm is not what it used to be. It used to be a formidable Category 5, but now it's rather clear that shear is really getting in its way and it's been weakening quite a bit since then. We're anticipating weakening for the rest of its life. That eye collapse is just very clear.